WFM.com. This is your home for local and community information, news, politics, sports, all the info you need to start your day. Brought to you by Massey Toyota and Kinston. Experience the Massey difference at 1 800 New Massey and MasseyToyota.com. Now, here's the host for Talk of the Town, Henry Hinton. Okay, welcome in. It's hour two of Talk of the Town here this morning. I was eight, I was out trying to make coffee, and the coffee is missing. MIA. We had to find coffee. We had to go in somebody's office and get the coffee out. Mm-hmm. Who's hiding the coffee Who these keeps days? keeps in their office. Who's hiding the Welcome coffee? back to Talk of the Town. Uh, what's the radar looking like now? I was, uh, is it still moving? Oh, yeah. Still moving? Yeah, taking its time. It looks pretty good, though. We'll this get this nasty, uh, this nasty stuff that we've yeah. got is uh, is moving, and I can tell you that I'm looking at it now, and it looks like we're, it looks like we're getting kind of the close to the tail end of it here. Do you think that's true? I got two more hours on it, so about ten, ten thirty. Yeah, about ten, ten thirty. The edge of it's going to clear. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look like two more hours to me. Confirm that for me, McGee. Tell him he breaks his own radar. Are you looking at the radar? I'd say at least. Are an you hour. looking at it too? What do you think I'm going to be looking at? Well, I mean, well, I'm looking at it. I'm. It looks like <laughs> I'm trying to be optimistic. I'd say at least an hour. It's another hour of this, at least. And then the sunshine's coming in behind it. Uh huh. We've got uh, high temperatures of 57 today, and uh, I can tell you that we're talking about here in Greenville. If you're east of us. Like my mom, I was talking to my mom this morning. She had a doctor's appointment in Greenville today, and I called her this morning and said, I don't know. You want not, It's nasty out here. You might not want to drive in this stuff. But I'm driving south, and I think I'm going to be fine. But moving to it's, this stuff's moving to the northeast, north-northeast. But sooner or later, probably around 10-ish or so this morning, things will clear up. So uh, I think it's going to be a good day, and the sun's going to come out. Uh, coming up Saturday, it's the annual Greenville Brushstrokes annual holiday art show and sale. Uh, my friend John Grossner is here. John is one of the artists that does this every year. And you are going to be able to purchase art from local artists. And so, and John has brought some of his pieces into show this morning. In fact, I was at Atavola. Uh, I was at Atavola last night after the game. I didn't notice it last night, but the other day I was in there and I noticed some of John and other local artist pieces hanging on the wall now. In There's some good pieces in there. Yeah, yeah. really are. Very some nice. of those will probably be put on sale uh, coming up on Saturday as well. This is going to take place Saturday. John is here to talk about that. It's going to start at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. So if you're into local art, if you want original art, stand by because coming up just a couple of minutes, John is going to be here to tell us about that. Uh, also, this morning, we are going to – hey, we got Josh now? Josh Graham is leaving Greenville shortly and heading to Charlotte. He will be doing his show this afternoon on 94.3 The Game live in Charlotte because tonight the Panthers play live at uh, Bank of America Stadium. I I wish the game was on earlier. It doesn't start until 8.30. I think Josh said it was like an 8.35 kick. And, um, you know, that's about my bedtime. Do you yeah, go to bed that early? I'll, I'll get I'll get through halftime. Huh? I'll get through halftime. I'll probably stay up and watch I'll get it through halftime. halftime tonight, but I'll I'll be so bleary eyed tomorrow I won't be able to see. I don't know how Engelbrecht does it because he does the eleven o'clock news and then gets in here. It, it's that it's those young, you're young and that's the coffee we have. Young and vibrant. Rocket fuel. I was about to say young, rocket young fuel. and dumb, but that didn't rocket fit. fuel. Young and vibrant. Vibrant. Young and vibrant. Yeah. Yeah. I've been called worse. Speaking of young and vibrant. The best sports talk on the radio in Eastern North Carolina, bar none, is when you listen to Josh Graham in the ad. He has unbelievable guests. And he's doing a great job of covering sports in Eastern North Carolina. Josh Graham live on my telephone right now. Good morning, Joshy. How are you? Doing well. Just trying to be like Matt Engelbrecht each and every day. I don't think you ought to do Mm-mm. that. Mm-mm. I don't think I'd do that. But, but hey, uh, be you. So you had a busy weekend, and, and it's, it continues. You're heading to Charlotte. Today to do your show this afternoon from five to seven. Are you back at Queen City Q? Yep, we're going to be at Queen City Q. Former ECU football player Craig Gott runs that restaurant, and Pirate Club has a lot of its viewing parties for ECU football there, and it's going to be very neat among our guests. 
a couple of red eye flights have been taken from Phoenix to Charlotte by um, one, the crew chief for Martin Truex's car, who is very much in the hunt for the NASCAR uh, for the NASCAR chase. That is Big Ed Watkins, a former ECU football player. Dustin Lineback is another one of those who is a former ECU football player from about six, seven years ago, who is also in a pit crew as well for NASCAR. We got former football players. We got former basketball players. We got a beat writer for the Miami Dolphins who is a ECU graduate as well. So you roll all that together, it should be a pretty good show. A beat writer for the Miami Dolphins is a former ECU football player? Yep. Uh, his name is Antoine Staley. And I, think, I remember I think, him. I thought he said just graduate. He's a, is it, he played football at ECU? Uh, I, I think he was a part of the program briefly. I remember that name. He is. He, he works for USA Today, specifically covering the Miami oh. Dolphins. How about and that? And I think the Miami Hurricanes, too, which is the center of the college football universe right now after they beat Notre Dame this weekend. So it, it, it's a lot to get to. And then, then we, we will try to sprint a couple of blocks over to get into the stadium in time before that 8.30 kick as Queen City Q is conveniently located adjacent to the Spectrum Center, the home of the Hornet. That's a, you'll, you'll have plenty of time to do that. Yeah. you have plenty of time <laughs> to do that, yeah. Because they don't kick off until midnight. That's why I hate Monday and Thursday night football. By the way, did you see, did you see the controversy that, that kicked up over the weekend about Thursday night football? The NFL, did. Some of the NFL players are now talking about boycotting Thursday night games. Because they say it's dangerous for their health because if so many people have gotten hurt on Thursday night. Richard Sherman, uh, Aaron Rodgers, they're saying three days rest after an NFL game is not enough and that the league is abusing them by playing on Thursday nights. It should be noted this. The two, the two men you speak of there, th- these are not guys you would, you would fit into the category of, of being – a, a, a dumb jock, so to speak. Uh, Richard Sherman and, and Doug Baldwin both went to Stanford, and they're emotional players, and they, they are very well-spoken guys and respected players in this league. But the, the way I look at it, and I heard this really good analogy uh, on the game. I think it was on Colin Cowherd's program, 3-5 um, to five on, on 94-3. Uh, that Thursday football is a lot like underdone cookies you know where we, we all like cookie dough we all like cookies but you know it, it even though it, if it's not fully cooked you still eat it it might be a little gooier it might not be it might be a little underdeveloped but you you still enjoy the product it's just not fully developed that's what thursday night football is while we enjoy football, we enjoy football, right? But it, it, it's you taking the cookies out of the oven too soon. Yeah. The Panthers are 6-3. and three, mm-hmm. And now, you know, the best teams in the league all have like seven wins except for, um, I guess, um, somebody's got eight, right? Who's got eight? The Eagles. Philadelphia. Yeah, the Eagles yeah. are. They're, did they win yesterday? But they're fourteen. The Eagles, I think, were on a bye week. Yeah, they, they had a bye week. They they yeah, okay, good. So they can't, they couldn't get the nine yesterday. But the Eagles have eight wins. But uh, the elite teams now are separating themselves here midseason. And tonight, the Panthers have a chance to get their seventh win. They're six and three, but they've looked great at times, and they've looked awful at times. And, you know, they always seem to play at the level of their competition. So I'm looking at this game tonight for the Panthers and thinking it could be a trap game. And they also don't really play well on Monday night football, do they? Don't they always lose on Monday night football? They've had problems, Henry, playing at home this year, specifically. The Buffalo Bill game. They, they nearly lose at home. They don't really score that often. I was there for that game. They they were terrible that day on, on offense. Then the New Orleans Saints game, that they were that way. And they were trying to – it seemed like to me, I don't know about you, they are trying to figure things out a lot last week without having Kelvin Benjamin in there. And it seems but you, to but, me – But here's the good news. They did figure it out because they started using McCaffrey a lot more. Mm-hmm. They uh, Funchess uh, got a lot more catches. 
I mean, I'm fine with Kelvin Benjamin being gone. I mean, the word I'm getting, I don't know what you're hearing, but the word I'm getting around uh, is that, you know, Rivera and some of the guys up, up in, the, in the main office were kind of getting over Kelvin Benjamin because he was developing a little bit of an attitude. Sure. And yeah. I don't think it's any coincidence that the Panthers won the Super Bowl in a season where Kelvin Benjamin tore his ACL in the preseason. Right. Not to say that he isn't an excellent player and might not have success in Buffalo, whatever, but Carolina certainly can have success without number 13 on the football field, and they showed it last week. And like to your point, Christian McCaffrey, I, I, I thought he's – I've heard Carolina fans have mixed review, reviews on him so far. Um, and what is that? Uh, hold on a sec. Oh, sorry about that. But Christian McCaffrey. Wait a minute. Thought, hold on a second. What was it? It was an alarm on my you phone, Henry, to make sure I don't forget about this program. You can't. You can't. You can't leave us hanging when we hear something like a strange noise like that, and then say, "What is that?" and then not tell us. Sorry okay. about that. Yeah. It was an alarm on my phone. It's all. It's all okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought Christian's been great, but a lot of people think that he's been a bust, so to speak, because. He doesn't have the 100 rushing yard performance, but when you add the passing, what he can do in the passing game to the rushing game, he, he I thought he's been good to great week to week, and he's just getting better. Yeah, I was listening to Coach Logan talking about him on Saturday morning on his show, and, and uh, he was saying he still believes in McCaffrey. He thinks he's going to be a star. But you know what? He's smaller than I thought he was when, coming out of Stanford. Yeah, you know he's smaller. I, I just thought he was a bigger dude than that. But he, he was small in college. But it's funny what playing in the NFL will do for yeah. you. All right. So, so what do you what time. do you think is going to happen tonight? I mean, is the <clears throat> Panthers going to roll? They're going to get their seventh win. I, I think they're going to because I, I thought they they made a couple of strides last week offensively, and also I think this is the time where urgency starts to kick in. You mentioned teams in, in the NFL getting their seventh win, and in the Eagles' case, they have their eighth. One of those teams that are seven and two right now are the New Orleans Saints that have won seven games in a row, and Carolina is trying to keep pace with them. Also, the Dallas Cowboys had a really important game against the Falcons yesterday, and Atlanta came out on top and hammered mm. Dallas. Justin Hardy had a touchdown in that game. So there's an urgency standpoint that I think you got to keep of note here for Carolina, but also I think Carolina's trending in the right direction. While yeah, you know, the, the, the NFC uh, South has always been um, considered to be kind of a soft division, but not this year. You got Atlanta, you got New Orleans, you got Atlanta went to the Super Bowl last year. They 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 played great yesterday, and you got the Panthers, and then you got Tampa Bay, which is always soft. But you but. That's a strong division this year, and so the Panthers. I was watching NFL Network last night. Uh, I was over at Atavola after the basketball game, and I and uh, they were they they uh, Junior Seau and that crowd. They put the uh, they put the predictions for the playoffs up, and they had, of course, New Orleans winning the NFC South, but they had the Panthers in the playoffs as a wild card team. That could that could change because you know what we need is for the Saints to start sucking. <laughs> we need the Panthers I, I, to keep winning. I wouldn't bank on it though because New Orleans. Here's the crazy thing about the Saints. When I when I think Saints and I think they're being good and I, I imagine them being good, I'm thinking they're throwing the ball all over the yard and it's Drew Brees leading a team in a 50 to 40. Week in, week out since. That's how they're winning their football games. Yeah. But that hasn't been the case. They, they've been running the ball, and they've been winning with defense. And, oh, yeah, that Drew Brees guy, he, he's still pretty good. And they've won seven games in a row that way. So Yeah, they're, they're on a roll. But, you know, they, they are. you never know. An injury here or, you know, uh, an off-the-field mm -hmm. incident there, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. All right, uh, Josh Graham, who will be doing his show live this afternoon on our sister station, our Sports FM station. 94.3 The Game. He'll be doing it live in Charlotte today from 5 to 7. McGee, you want to hey, wait? Hey, in? Josh, uh, before we go, ECU football, tough loss this weekend. Cincinnati coming up. I think this is a winnable game, believe it or not. I really do think they match up better against Cincinnati yeah, yeah, than, what they, Temple this weekend. than what they did against Tulane, and you had Memphis to close out the season. Um, you know, what are you thinking come season's end in, in, in terms uh -huh. of, of, in, in, of anything that could potentially happen? 
I, I think the next big thing on the horizon for Reese Carolina is to figure out who the answer is or what the answer is at defensive coordinator. Because everybody wants to talk about changing coaches. Everyone wants to talk about quarterback changes and all that nonsense. But Scotty Montgomery is going to be here for a third year, and he should get the time with this recruiting class coming in and what we've already seen from some of the younger players on this roster. To, to, he, we, we deserve it as a fan base uh, and, and the media and the administration and that coaching staff to see through what these younger players can be, what Scotty Montgomery's younger players can do um, in a couple of years at ECU. The question is, what direction do you take with that defense? Because there's no question that Robert Brumpy, when he was promoted from defensive line coach to defensive coordinator, has gotten these players in better position and has them playing harder. That's the thing, one of my biggest takeaways from Saturday, ECU's defense was still playing very hard when things weren't going right and got turnovers. Their most turnovers this season, three in a game, and they go to overtime. So you got a coordinator that's inspiring these players, but the, just the talent's not there yet. So do you keep Prunty as the defensive coordinator? Do you keep him on staff going into next year? I would be surprised if he wasn't on staff, but do you find somebody else who can run the, the same scheme that these players are already familiar with? I don't know. That's the but you know, you know, here's here's the question. Here's the question I have about that. And and let me say this first. Um, I've said from the beginning. I think that doing nothing at season's end is not an option for the administration. I don't. I don't think do. I think doing nothing is not an option because, and and I don't speak out on this very often, but but I just think they're going to have trouble selling tickets next season. And so doing nothing is not an option. I don't know what doing something is. I kind of agree with you. I think Scotty, um, you know, I think there's a learning curve anytime you hire a guy who hasn't been a head coach. And, of course, Scotty's been around the NFL. He's been around, you know, great football programs. But there's a learning curve, and I think the learning curve at ECU might even be steeper because ECU is a place where we've always won with developing talent, not recruiting it. And, and you know, you always hear, well, he deserves another year because he's having a great recruiting season. Everybody says he's having a great recruiting season. Don't you hear that every year? <laughs> You know, and, you, you know what I'm saying? I, but I, I'm, and I'm not advocating for change of any specific kind except to say that doing nothing may not be an option just simply because you've got an empty stadium right now and you've got to bring fans back next year. Now, we'll, now, now, here's one good thing. They do have Carolina at home next year, and they do have a good home schedule next year. So that's going to help sell tickets. But uh, – but, but, you know, the, uh, I really believe that the talent gap was much deeper than we thought that it was. And, again, you can't pin that on Scotty Montgomery or any of these coaches or Jeff Kopfer. In fact, you may look at Jeff Kopfer and say, hey, he made the right decision when he made a coaching change. You know, I don't subscribe to the idea that we're losing because of the coaching change. I subscribe to the idea that we are losing because we had to make a coaching change. And I know that there are other people who don't agree with that, but, I mean, you need to be cerebral enough about it to think it through. And, and I see what I see out there on the field, and I hear people like Steve Logan on Saturday morning talking. To, he was on with you, Josh. Uh, you were on with him on his show. I mean, Coach Logan is saying there's no t- – that, 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 we got a talent problem on that side of the ball. Isn't that what he's saying? He is saying that. Coaching certainly does help, and we'll find out if, it, if, if this staff is capable of extinguishing some of the fires and fixing or in developing some of the talent, like you mentioned, next year. But I, I'll, I'll just add two things to that. Number one, in a broad sense, kind of where you were going here, I – when it comes to whether or not Scotty Montgomery should be brought back at ECU, I don't know about you, but I don't want to have another off season where the question is posed by a fan base and a fan base is split of whether or not a guy was given enough time, whether or not a guy deserved another year. 
yeah. which was the exact conversation we had with Ruff McNeil, even though his tenure was obviously a little bit longer. But then the other thing is this. On Saturday, ECU loses a game to Tulane, and it was the, it was the first time the Pirates have ever lost to Tulane at home in nine tries. But how many things happened in that game that you could pin on play calling or on coaching? Because to me, I, I thought with the way they shot the ball deep down the field, one-on-one balls, Tulane's DBs outplayed ECU's wide receivers. Game planning, they thought they had a matchup there. I was fine with them doing that. They, they, they were going to bring one safety and go uh, press man-to-man on the outside. You, you shoot the ball down the field if you feel you have good receivers out there. Also, the play call at the end. I had no problem with them thinking that a guy Darius Pinnock size could get a half a yard. I, I'm, I thought, one, I'm 100% in agreement with you. Everybody screams about the play calling when the plays don't work. But you don't hear them scream about, you know, it's a tip. It, it, you know, we, we have so many kind of stereotypical fans that, oh, the play calling's terrible. Prime example well, in they, that game. They, but they only say that when the plays don't work. Prime example is when Cert was brought in, ran the fake like he was going to run, and then popped it over the top. Right. That ball should have been caught. Oh, it should have been a touchdown. play call. Yeah. There well, was got, no one there in tipped. the middle. It yeah. got tipped, didn't it? Slightly tipped, but it still yeah. should have been called. Still dropped by Penix. It was an excellent play call, and I thought they handled Sir perfectly. Uh, speaking of things, we will have tonight at Queen City Q and not on, on 94.3 The Game, five to seven. We will um, we we will have press conference sound from Scotty Montgomery, and also you'll hear from Jeff Lebo and players from ECU's win yesterday. It, it's a, an exciting time. Panthers, ECU football, ECU basketball. I'm just glad we have a competitive game to talk All about. Right, we, where we we, we've got to go, but I wanted to get a quick uh, word from you about ECU basketball because I went to the game last night, as you know. And, uh, you know, I, every year when I go out and watch ECU at the beginning of the year, I get excited because I see new, exciting, young, new players. But, man, the floor was full of them last night. But, you know, uh, you know and, and, again, poor Jeff Lebo is under uh, attack as well. But he can't keep players here. And he has lost – you were telling me the other day, Josh, the best recruiting class Lebo ever had was two years ago. Last year. Was it, Well, was it last year? Okay, yeah, where he brought in Hughes and Reac. All four of the players brought in last year that everybody thought were the best players we'd ever had, all four of them are gone from the program. It's, yeah. un, it's unbelievable. Yet, yet I look out there on the floor last night, and I saw what I thought was the best young talent I've ever seen at ECU. It is very conflicting now because there there are there are reasons you should be concerned for players transferring, and then there's some that's just the way college basketball is now. There's a statistic that actually Coach Lebo passed along to me that he, he saw that. Four-year players in college, four-year college basketball players, so not the ones that leave one and done the top tier at a talent, transfer at one point at least in their college career. Unbelievable. And when you when you have a guy like Ding Reak play significant minutes last year and then decide to go to Akron and transfer, you're, you're left scratching your head. But then you look at a guy like Elijah Hughes, who was a rotational player last year at guard, he, he leaves to go to Syracuse, and you're like, all right, well, that's maybe why the, maybe that's how the, how things work in college basketball at times. And then you have the suspension with Shepard and Wilkins, and they're off the team, according to people I hear very close to the program, though Jeff Lebo hasn't confirmed that specifically. Um, that's, trust that's, me. That's, trust me. They're off the team. They, yes, they ain't but, coming back. <laughs> no, they're not. And so, But you lose those two guys. It's hard – that's one of the ones that's very unfortunate, bad luck situation for a coaching staff. But to your point about the young talent last night, it is conflicting to think, all right, this Justin Watley kid, number 13, who you're going to hear a lot about the next couple of months, Jeff Lebo called him the smartest player he's ever coached as a freshman in his 30 years of coaching. He hey, but not understand. only that, he's 6'8", he can run, he can shoot, and he can rebound. Yes, great talent, but – I'm not sure if anybody else had the feeling when you watch him play and he's playing well, thinking, oh, man, I hope I hope he can stay. I hope he can stay like B.J. Tyson has or like Kentrell Barkley has 
and he doesn't end up like the kid who goes to Syracuse or one that goes to Georgia Tech, Robert Sampson, a couple of years ago. That's, okay, well, we, we're, we're almost out of time. I want you to talk about the kid that transferred in from Hawaii. He is an ace. The guy is an incredible player. Uh, what's his name? Isaac, Isaac Fleming is his name. Okay, what's the, stor- is- what's the story on him? He transferred here from the University of Hawaii, and, you, and he played on a team that went to the NCAA tournament. Now, that's correct, but then as things, as things happen, you, 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 you find yourself wanting to go elsewhere, and he wanted to get closer to the East Coast, so Jeff Lebo recruited him, and Got him into this program, and he's an interesting personality. Man. He's, he's I mean, from Wil- night, he's from Wilmington, Delaware, by the way. Wilmington, Delaware, yeah. East Coast guy, and uh, he he has a bright personality that the team really rallies around. And he was in the program last year. You obviously have to sit out a year when transferring. And Je- Jeff was continually telling me that this kid is is the real deal, and he, he is, is a true. <laughs> driving point guard in fact coach lebo said that he reminded him of a old school northeastern point guard with his toughness and being able to drive and being able to bang with some of the bigs and still hit shots at the rim he did a little bit of that last night and ecu is really going to need him to play major minutes especially with uh, jeremy shepherd out now well see that's the, the the thing about it is i was watching him last night and thinking to myself shepherd wouldn't play <laughs> Because this guy's a lot better than Shepard. <laughs> this guy's this guy's one of the best players we've ever seen at ECU. I think he has that talent level. Yeah. Kind of like Scal Paul came here from Missouri. Yeah. Brock Young is another driving point guard, and that's not coincidental, Henry. ECU had uh, Jeff Lebo's had his two best seasons when he had a point guard who can drive and score, and he yeah. hasn't had one since the CIT championship in 2013 right. when Miguel Paul was running that unit. So All right, uh, we'll and, and ECU stuff. is back at home on Wednesday night. Uh, everybody get out there and watch this basketball team. I think you're going to be surprised. I think you're going to be, especially these freshmen and this kid that came in from Hawaii. All right, Josh, we got to go. We're running late. Hey, dr- drive carefully today, and we'll be listening to you this afternoon, 5 to 7, live from Charlotte this afternoon. Uh, right before the Panthers game on 94.3 The Game, Josh will be live in downtown Charlotte at Queen City Q. Uh, bring us back some of that Queen City Q, man. It's, it's delicious stuff. And by the way, Wednesday, we'll be out. Stop by and say hi if you go out to Minji's Coliseum. We'll be doing our show from Minji's as well, leading up to ECU Radford. Off, awesome. That's great. That's great. All right. Thank you, Josh. We'll be listening to you, you this afternoon in Charlotte. Pull the Panthers through the night. Josh Graham on 94.3 The Game. Josh doing a great job every afternoon, 5 to 7. All right, let's get a break in. We're coming back. We're going to talk about the Greenville Brushstrokes uh, Holiday Art Show coming up this weekend in Greenville. News headlines and more as we roll through Monday morning. It's 8.33. Some pretty incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First in flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance, perfected in the Carolinas. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Days. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. 
all 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Days. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Day. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. All right, now they've done it. I just got a notice from Netflix that they're raising our prices. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And here's the thing. It's, it's been $8 forever, right? Going up to what? Ten ninety nine. Can you not Whoa. just raise it a buck? Whoa. That's a pretty See, stiff increase. What is, Netflix has been uh, the best value out there, I think. 8 bucks a month. Now they're going to not 11 bucks a month. Come on, Netflix. And on top of that, you put your money on Kevin Spacey. Is, mm. any, is any of this money going to Spacey? I think you should get grandfathered in since you've been <laughs> a, a subscriber for so long. They should just charge new customers ten ninety nine. That's what I think. Let the new people pay that, not me. All right, let's go to the news desk. Here is uh, Matt. Ing Matt, are you wearing shorts this morning? I just realized. You I got some shorts on. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's wearing shorts this morning. Yeah. It's freezing out there and raining. Cool. Go these get people, a workout these in people from Michigan, they don't know how to dress in the South. Yeah, yeah, Come down here, yeah. you think it's like 90 degrees all the time, don't you? <laughs> all right, here is Matt Engelbrecht <laughs> with our news update from WIT. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. We're going to be following a few stories as we go through the rest of the afternoon uh, and the evening hours. I'm going to start off with a big story coming in out of Lenore County and LaGrange. Lenore County Sheriff's Office is piecing together the events uh, that led up to a deadly shooting in LaGrange early Sunday morning that killed three people and injured four. Lenore County deputies responded to a shots fired call on the 300 block of West Queen, Queen Street around 1.15 a.m., just a block away from a church and a school. Deputies say they discovered four gunshot victims. Three of the four victims were pronounced dead at the scene. The fourth was airlifted to Vita Medical Center and is reported to be in stable condition. Officials say at the time of the shooting, there were several other people in an outbuilding who ran away from the scene. While the Lenore County detectives and crime scene personnel are working to locate evidence, conduct interviews, and develop leads, neighbors say they are shocked that this has happened in their neighborhood. If any, anyone has any information, they're asked to contact Sheriff's Office 252-559-6100. Sheriff's Office is not releasing the names of the victims at this time. State troopers are investigating a wrong way crash that killed one person on Sunday. The crash occurred at 1 a.m. on U.S. Highway 264 near Bailey. According to Highway Patrol, 47-year-old Randolph Lee was driving his 2004 Mazda eastbound in the westbound lanes when he hit a Lexus head-on. Authorities say Lee died at the scene. The other driver, a 35-year-old, 36-year-old from Raleigh, was transported to Vita Medical Center in Greenville. The crash remains under investigation, but officials say they do not think, do not think that uh, alcohol uh, played a part in that accident. And finally, Carteret County, a portion of a major highway in the east, will be shut down for construction over the next few months. Starting Monday, today, part of NC-58 will be closed in Emerald Isle as DOT crews work on installing a new roundabout. The highway will be shut down between Islander Drive and Loon Drive until early March. Passenger vehicles will detour on Reed Drive, while larger trucks and tractor trailers will use Crew Drive. Those are the latest news headlines from WI10, WI10.com. The time now on this Monday morning, rainy and cold Monday morning, 839.
I'm Eddie Clark. Thank you, sir. Let's Welcome. check our uh, weather now. McGee has our weather update. Yeah, what it's wet with rain moving offshore by the early afternoon hours. Highs today in the middle 50s. For tonight, we're going to see some clearing skies. Breezy with lows around 41 degrees. For your Tuesday, partly sunny with highs in the mid 50s. No rain in the forecast for tomorrow. Lows tomorrow night, very chilly around 36 degrees. And for your Wednesday, warming up to a high near 60 degrees. Plenty of sunshine will be on tap for your Wednesday. Lows Wednesday night will be right around 40 degrees. All right, I'm checking the uh, radar and the center of this is right over Greenville right now, and I'm predicting it will be gone in an hour. <laughs> I'm predicting Greenville will be clear in an hour. However, if you're east of Greenville, it's just moving toward you, so there you go. News and weather, a service this morning of our friends at Tire Realty and Property Management, our friends here in Greenville who are killing it because the market is very, very strong. The average sales price for homes is up. And it's a great time to sell your home. And it's a great time to rent your home. There are not enough homes on the market right now, so that makes uh, higher prices and quicker sales. And so you should, uh, you should sell right. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, yesterday who's selling their home, and they, they put it on the market and sold it lickety split. I'm telling you, it's a great market right now. And with Tire Realty, there are a lot of reasons to list with them. They're 99-day guarantee. They sell your home within 99 days, or it's free. There are no upfront fees, and they have a one-day listing contract. They're the only real estate firm in town that gives you a get-out-of-jail-free card. If you're not satisfied, they let you uh, out, and you pay them nothing. And uh, always, also, if you're looking for a new career, they have some availability right now. Professional sales career, you should call them today at 758-HOME. Or visit them at 99orfree.com. That's the Tire Realty Group and Property Management Team. 842. Okay, coming up next, details on this weekend's big art show in Greenville. It's the Greenville Brushstrokes uh, Holiday Art Show and Sale coming up Saturday. All the details coming up next. Be right back. We're not just introducing the 2018 Toyotas, we're reducing them. It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 Corollas, $149 a month. 2018 Camrys, $169 a month. Hurry to Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Some pretty incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First in flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance, perfected in the Carolinas. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Days. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. My prescription refills. My son's shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents' care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. 
Why settle for a 2017 model when you can have massive reductions on a 2018 Toyota? It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 RAV4s, $179 a month. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. All right, quarter to nine, and I've been telling you that the uh, big art sale is coming this weekend, the art show and sale for the Greenville Brushstrokes group. This is the local group that is, uh, I guess it, they're amateurs. I'll find out. Well, let's get all the details. My buddy John Grosser is here. John uh, comes every year and tells us about this. Just in time for the holidays, uh, local artists have their stuff on sale, and you're going to be able to go out and see it and buy it this weekend. By the way, uh, we've got some art to show you, so if you're on the radio, you won't be able to see it. You'll have to describe this, John. But if you can get to Facebook, we're, li we're streaming live on Facebook, or you can watch it on TV or see the replay on Cable 7. John Grosser, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Henry. Good to see you. No, that's great to you, be here, You too. do this every year. Now, the, the Greenville yeah. Brushstrokes group is a group of <clears> local – Art enthusiast. I mean, would you call yourself amateurs? You know, or? I think uh, a lot of them are amateurs, but a lot of us have reached the age uh, and the level where uh, we can feel like we can compete with a lot of the best. So, so you're yeah. se when, when you yeah. start selling your art, that you you are then effectively a professional. Well, I think I think that's uh, certainly if you look at come and take a look at some of the artwork, you're going to find that it's uh, some of the best in the, in the country here. So yeah. Yeah. All right. And so this is an event coming. And by the way, I saw some of your, you told me to see uh, that you've got some of your stuff uh, up at Atavola. Yeah, I've got about and 20 pieces. I saw, there. I saw some. Yeah. I was there last night. Well, cool. uh, but, Thank uh, you. But I, I know uh, the Atavola features a lot of the local artists, which is kind of cool. Every month we swap it out. Yeah. The brush strokes and Don Sasser over there allows us to swap out artwork every month. So it's yeah. cool. This I'm is my month. How, how many? Oh, so the, so this is the John Grosser month. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 We all swap out and do yeah. it at times. So, I so like ne November. next month it'll be somebody else That's in right. a month. Okay, That's great. Right. All right, so how many people involved in Greenville Brushstrokes? You know, it started back in uh, 1903 or 2003. 2003. That's in 1903. Uh, yeah, that was a long time. Uh, 2003, <laughs> and uh, it was just a handful of artists. Now we have close to 60 members. Wow. And they're all local Pitt County folks? Well, uh, Pitt County, there are some from uh, Rocky Mount, Little Washington. Actually, down I, know, in actually I know one of them that lives in Moorhead City. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine. So, is, is, so they, do, yeah. they do come up, and uh, right. we meet every Monday or every other Monday night at the museum here in town. Right. And we don't get together to actually paint. But we get together to critique our work and to improve and educate, do uh, different uh, programs like that. All right, so uh, this Saturday is the big day. People this are going to be able to come in, view what's available, buy it for holidays. And uh, it's going to be uh, 10 to 4. And tell me where you're going to be. It's going to be at uh, the First Christian Church uh, there on 14th Street. This is between Portertown and Red Banks. Right. It's that right. big church. They've yeah. got a great big uh, Out fellowship near the hall there. Uh, people call that the Quill Ridge area. Okay. Right. right. Isn't that yeah, right? It is. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Uh, great big uh, auditorium area that we can put about a thousand pieces of artwork up there, whether it's calendars, uh, you know, little cards, as well as uh, oils and our acrylic paintings. So there'll be small ones, there'll be large ones, uh, a huge variety of different media. And all the artists will be there showing their stuff and selling it and yeah. negotiating with you to buy it. You know, I think it's probably negotiable, as it <laughs> certainly would be with me if I'm there. You can come and talk to me. Buy, uh, buy one, get one free. Buy, well, buy two, get one free. I don't know if it goes free. that far. <laughs> we might uh, have you buy three, you get a little discount or something like that. All right, and you brought some of your artwork this morning. And I, I did, and yeah. I, I'm particularly interested in one piece. Well, I, we'll get I just to that. Did, okay, go. You uh, know, there's show, cards show like what this. You well, yeah. cards like this one here. Is that a Christmas fit. card? Well, uh, this is just a, 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 one of the artists. My wife did this one. Yeah. Uh, and it's cards like that. There will yeah. be Christmas cards available. Yeah. There's also uh, see uh, if we calendars can... like this, Henry, yeah. uh, that's available. Hold it up so we can see. Okay. Here we go. Right you, here. You know how to There's do There's a calendar. This. Yeah. There you go. Okay. And so uh, that's Again, an Again, for the radio audience, I'm holding up a beautiful calendar. It's yeah. got a... A uh, a painting of an owl on it. Dodie, Dodie told me to give you that. So is, that you, is, that's your, yours, is, is your wife Dodie? Is she? Yeah. Is she into painting owls? Yeah. Well, she is this that? year. Last that? year it was something else. So she always that? has that's a series. Like well, that. thank you, Dodie. I appreciate uh, that. Different sizes of painting. Here's a uh, here's a, a flower arrangement. It could be a still life that I painted just recently. Uh, and now I'm into this uh, where I'm into the fruit. 
Yeah. And I don't know why I got into fruit all of a sudden, but you can see that. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, you know, and the prices are all going to be very, you're very talented. Ranging from, uh, uh, but it's all going to be very economical. That's what's cool about yeah. the local artists here. You know, uh, you go up to Raleigh or Charlotte or something, you could be up to. Uh, $500,000 down here, you're going to get it for an uh, original piece of artwork for a very economical price. Yeah, so if we're you are really want, we're, excited about it. All right, that. and we're show, Michael is showing some of the other uh, pieces now. Okay, well, this is a, a larger piece that I have uh, down here. Again, I was mentioning I did the fruit, so there's three cherries, uh, and I don't know what else is you're painting, down there. Yeah, all right, keep going, keep going. We're almost out of time. Keep going, Michael. What? Did you what? <laughs> no, th I'm not known as a portrait painter. Okay, for the for the <laughs> for the radio audience, there is a portrait that John has done of me, yep. which absolutely yep. shocked me when I what when, when I saw you walk in. I'm like, who is that? Harry Carey? <laughs> Somebody famous. That's all I. What know. made it? What in the world made you? Do, you know, do, do I, something. I just tuned into the. I'm sure that one's going to sell. That's going to be oh, a hot one. No, you know, I don't know if it's even going to leave this station. Uh, this is a gift for me to you. Oh, God the, bless you. The, the isn't that, isn't that you nice? Well, you're, so, you're so nice. And uh, this one, That's the last a, one was a Pamlico River. Oh, let's uh, see that, that one. I painted like that. Oh, yeah. This is just Beautiful. a small example of what's going to be on. All right, so this weekend, this uh, John Stuff and other Greenville Brushstrokes uh, artists will be on sale. 10 to 4, First Christian Church. Yep. It's a first come, first serve. Uh, you're also going to have uh, raffle tickets, right? You're going to be giving away a hand-painted glass ornament by yeah, Dolly Caldwell. One of our Caldwell. members, yeah. Dolly, uh, paints uh, uh, Christmas uh, ornaments. Yeah. And uh, that'll be yeah. on a raffle out there. Wow. Available. Well, yes. uh, this is a, uh, this will be a great event on Saturday. So It'll get out fun. there and uh, buy some artwork. Hey, when you, for the gift, give the gift that for the person that has you think has everything, uh, give yeah. them some original Greenville artwork That's from right. some of the Greenville Brushstrokes artists. Do it for your Thank family. you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, Thank too. you for the portrait. That was, that was oh, a real shocker, that's man. That's a real Thank happiness. You. Thanks. Good to see you. Ten to four, and I'll continue to mention this all week long. All right. Appreciate John you. John Grosser from Greenville Brushstrokes. Thanks, okay, everybody. we'll be right back. We're not just introducing the 2018 Toyotas, we're reducing them. It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 Corollas, $149 a month. 2018 Camrys, $169 a month. Hurry to Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Football fans, show your spirit at Dowdy Thickland Stadium this Saturday, November 18th, when the Pirates battle the Cincinnati Bearcats in the final home game of the season. Kickoff is scheduled for 12 noon, and you'll want to arrive early to help honor the graduating seniors in a pregame ceremony. Order your tickets today by calling 800-DIAL-ECU or online at ecupirates.com. Be a part of the loyal and bold this Saturday when the Pirates look to tame the Bearcats of Cincinnati. Some pretty incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First in flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance. Perfected in the Carolinas. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. My prescription refills. My son's shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents' care. My chart. Vitant My Chart. Vidant MyChart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1-855-MyVidant to learn how you can sign up. 
Why settle for a 2017 model when you can have massive reductions on a 2018 Toyota? It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 RAV4s, $179 a month. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Uh, again, I need to thank John Groster for this great painting he did of me. And I just noticed, Michael, look, he, uh, I've, what I've always wanted, he took out a couple of chins. I've, I've just got one chin in this portrait. John, you're the best. <laughs> it may not be accurate, but, <laughs> but I like it. All right, we're almost out of time. i got to remind you about a couple of things. I told you last hour about the big Acre Station meat farm sale, which is coming. Don't forget, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, everything's going to be on sale at Acre Station. they got their three-day truckload sale, uh, turkey breast, $119 a pound, uh, pork loins, $149 a pound, uh, uh, ground beef, $199 a pound, pork chops, $199 a pound. They've got hams on sale. they got turkeys on sale just in time for the big Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, Acre Station Meat Farm between Washington and Plymouth on Highway 32. This is the big weekend. You need to make plans to get out there Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. I promise you I'm going to be out there. I'm probably going to go Thursday because that's when uh, Thursday and Friday they're having the uh, smoked sausage sampling from 10 to 3. And then prizes every hour on Saturday, including one turkey an hour. Uh, I haven't mentioned all morning uh, the big Embers Christmas show coming up on December 10th. Uh, this is a, a benefit concert we're doing for Operation Santa Claus. All the money raised uh, at this concert at the door, and it's just 15 bucks a ticket, by the way. Great family show from the Embers coming December 10th. Never been done in Greenville before, and we're going to be at Re-Image Church on Fire Tower Road. More about that tomorrow morning, but thanks to our great sponsors of the Image, U.S. Lawns of Greenville, Dixon Foods, your McDonald's franchisee in eastern North Carolina, Eastern Trust Real Estate, in Motion Home Movie Digitizing Service, and Viva Med Concierge MedCare. The Embers on December 10th. You can get tickets by going to WTIBFM.com. See you tomorrow. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Day. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Some pretty incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First in flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance. Perfected in the Carolinas. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vidant My Chart. Vidant My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVidant to learn how you can sign up. Welcome in to the new Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Are you ready to drive a little to save a lot? I'm Rod Emery, General Manager at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. 
Come see us here in Washington for the best deal on a new car, truck, or Jeep and a great sales and service experience. Lease a new Ram Crew Cab truck for just $299 a month and only $299 due at signing during our drive and discover event. We're looking forward to seeing you at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, located on Highway 264 in between Greenville and Washington, or visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com.